Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Tech TLDR. Today, we have a pretty brief episode. We're going to be talking about Virgin Orbit's progression, becoming a big player in the space industry, Russia's new planned space station, and, of course, Starship SN15 and other SpaceX-related news. So if you want to know everything, be sure to stick to the entire episode. Also, drop a like. As always, it helps out the channel tremendously. And consider subscribing if you're not already. It's completely free. Now, let's get into this video first. Look at this beautiful photo coming from Mary Boca Chica Gal of the Starship SN15 earlier this morning. Now here we have Virgin Orbit. Virgin Orbit, one of the aerospace companies under Richard Branson's Virgin brand. They successfully secured another contract for its launcher one to put six hyperspectral satellites in the low earth orbit for defense contract Kinet IQ, I believe it's pronounced. Now while this launch isn't happening for another two years, it's showing that companies are beginning to put trust into Virgin Orbit and it's gonna be another company for us hopefully to be able to talk about in the soon future if they can get more contracts, more sophisticated technology, better launches going, things like that. Getting more projects into space, that's really what I wanna see what this channel wants to be about. So I'm excited to see that. And you guys let me know too, like are you looking forward to seeing the progress of these guys or do you care more just about SpaceX and the bigger players? Because personally, I wanna see Virgin Orbit become a big player. Next, let's talk about SpaceX and Starship SN15. So this tweet right here from Mary Boca Chica Gao shows the closures in that area. It was believed that the SN15 was going to undergo a static fire test yesterday on 420 because it's SpaceX, Elon Musk, and 420, of course. However, that wasn't the case. There were road closures, but they end up being canceled. There are road closures today, and they kind of, they are odd. So the road closures down there, you have 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. and then 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Those are really odd hours, especially for a static fire, which usually requires an entire day to make sure that if anything needs to be changed, they have the whole day to correct anything. So apparently, now this photo also comes from Mary, who did a tremendous job as always. The closure in the early afternoon was to apparently transport this crane from the launch site. That was the reason for it. If we go on Cameron County's website, we can see as of now, there's still closures for the evening. So it is possible we could see a static fire. There are no other closures for any other dates. So your guys' guess is as good as mine. You let me know down below if you think we'll see a static fire today or if that closure just isn't enough time and we're gonna have to wait a little longer. I think we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, personally. Now, regarding SpaceX actually launching the SN15, Christian Davenport, he brought up a good point. So SpaceX, they're still working with the FAA to get the license and approval for the Starship SN15's flight. And apparently they're close to doing so. Now remember, that the Starship SN15 it has new features that weren't on previous Starships, a lot of new features. So SpaceX, they need to clear these with the FAA before launch. Remember, the FAA's whole purpose with this, checking the documentation and the specs on these Starships is to make sure that if something does go wrong while they're launching the Starship, nobody's going to get hurt. The odds of someone getting hurt has to be less than one in a million. So they have to make sure that the components that they added, SpaceX added, there can't be like a... I don't know, like a nuclear bomb on top of this thing that would, you know, compromise anybody's safety within the area. They need to make sure that the things they added were very minimal. They were slight. They're not going to cause any sort of catastrophes. Now talking about SpaceX launches, the Dragon crew mission that's bringing the four astronauts back to the ISS. It's actually been scheduled now for Friday, April 23rd at about 4, or sorry, 549 Eastern Standard Time. And this is due to unfavorable weather conditions down there in the area. They don't want anything going wrong, putting these people into space. I don't blame them. You might as well wait another day to do so. And the final story, Russia is planning to have its own national space agency in orbit by 2025. So the international agreements regarding the ISS and its partners with Russia, it's expiring in 2024. And Russia, they have no interest in returning as of right now. But I, I think it's for good reason. One, everybody is trying to leave the ISS, right? It's old, it's outdated at this point, is wear and tear. And we're now at the point where building and setting up a new, more modern space station, it's more practical than trying to build upon the ISS, this old technology. While there may come off as a conflict of interest between governments, and I'm no government conspiracy guy, so if you think this is, you can let me know down below. But honestly, I think it just has to do with the progression. I mean, multiple private companies are looking to make their own space stations. China's gonna be making its own space station. The U.S. government is even likely to cut its ISS funding by 2028. So I see no problem with countries having their own space stations and private companies as well, as long as they're not conflicting with one another and they are cooperating. 
it really just doesn't make sense for Russia to stay with this if it's literally falling apart at this point. And this article, it came from BBC, which I think they really did a, a decent job, a good job of not being too biased about the whole, which like, is this a government thing? Is this a conflict of interest thing, blah, blah, blah. Because to me, this whole story seemed like almost like a scare tactic from some other media outlets, articles I was reading, trying to pretty much drive the whole USA versus Russia narrative. But to me, again, I think it just is a technological and human expansion. Nothing to do with governments being conflicted. I mean, don't get me wrong. I understand that there are, but I don't think, I don't think that's not the driving factor behind this. It has to do with the fact that it's like, imagine your first car. You love the thing. It was your, it got you around town, probably got you laid. And now you're at the point where it's like every time you go out to it in the morning, there's a puddle of oil below it. Eventually you have to get rid of it and you got to move on to that next vehicle. And that's pretty much what this is. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys in today's episode. I hope you enjoyed and be sure to have a good one.